right? It's Manny here, doing a little something, something. I want to give credit to this little trick I'm going to show you. Uh, I've heard of it through a friend, Robert Carranza, who's a producer, does Wicked Records. Um, I don't even have to tell you all the bands he's done. But he has a cool little trick that he does. Sometimes he goes into like Capitol Records or big studios and he's just by himself. And he wants to really get a good stereo setup. If he's doing a performance with the vocalist and acoustic guitar, he'll put an tone or some kind of a speaker on a stool and generate a tone out of it. Then he puts up two microphones, one for the vocal, one for the guitar, or if he was doing stereo for the room. You flip one out of phase and you go in there with some headphones and it's, I mean, this would be next level stuff. This is like, if you're going into your buddy's place, he's not gonna, <laughs> he's not gonna appreciate you walking around headphones, moving this mic around for 30 minutes. But if you're really committed to getting a true best phase possible performance, and you know your mic setup is solid beyond your ears, beyond using them, it's a cool little trick. It also can be put a speaker on a snare and you can uh, put a tone through it and check the overheads. It, it, you can go all kinds of places with it. So today I'm gonna do a 12 string and a vocal mic. So anyways, this is the strange setup. So uh, the SM7s take a lot of gain. So if you're gonna sing out of one, I could have choose different mics and I think the correlation between these two would have changed with a different type of mic. If this was the tube mic, maybe the phase would have been closer, but I chose an SM7 because a lot of people like them. Here is the Fender amp that I'm running the tone out. My headphone box, uh, I have an isolated tone running to it. So that's not in the main headphone system. Then with the main mix of my headphones, I could hear what these mics were picking up, which was the tone coming out of this. This is the mic that I moved all the way around here until the tone lightened up or almost disappeared. Then I knew that the sound source of me playing acoustic here was pretty good as far as these being in, t in phase. And that's when I flipped this one out of phase. So what you do is before you even come in here, you set up your amp. This is the mic that either on the preamp or your plug-in you can flip out of phase. I flipped this one out of phase. Then I let the tone through. Um, I had some headphones on, pushed them really close to my ears, not too loud, but just so I can hear the tone running through. And as I ran, moved this mic around, I could feel it in my headphones start to disappear. And as soon as it went as quiet as it could be, I knew that it was loud because as soon as I took my headphones off, it was really loud in here. That's how you know you got those. It's a freaky trick. It does work. I'm going to remove this now and I'm going to play acoustic guitar. Not going to do anything great. I'm just going to talk in the mic and play some songs to simulate if I was an artist. So here we are. I'm just going to check the mic and play a little guitar. This is just an SM7. That's the ribbon mic. Two mics. I have a Fender amp pushing out tones. They're both, I don't even know if they're in phase or not phase. One of the mics, which I think is the loudest one, which will be the acoustic guitar, I flip that out of phase. So when I walk in the room, it's really loud. I hear phase in my headphones, the ringing of the tone. I hear tones coming out of the amp. But as I move this mic around that's flipped out of phase, I'll hear in my headphones the tone go away. Not all the way, but as close as possible, and you just got a little wiggle room of the, of the mic. Once you get it where it drops, like, God, a lot of dBs, I come in here, check the, the, the amp still in there, pushing out tones. I'm gonna undo the, the mic that I'm moving around, which is the acoustic guitar ribbon mic. I'm gonna flip it back in phase. Okay. Once again, I checked in the room. I moved the mic around that I had flipped out of phase until the tone disappeared or mo almost all of it. I don't think you can totally make it totally go out because it's a figure eight and that's a dynamic. But as long as I got it where it's close, where it really drops down to almost not a whisper, but a little above that, I know my ratio of the SM7 and the ribbon mic are close enough. So if I go in there and play guitar and I sing, those correlation of those two microphones will be in phase as close as possible. Even though you eyeball it and it looks good, messing around like that really does make them as close as possible in phase. For those of you that don't know what uh, in, in phase or out phase, if you use two mics and there's a loud sound source and the two mics are at different positions, 
sometimes the farther mic will be out of phase with this mic. So if I'm talking in this mic and I bring up the room mic loud as possible, this mic will start to disappear and lose low end because this mic is out of phase. If you make this mic in phase, when you move it up or down, the tone and the volume and the thickness of your voice will remain the same. Has everything to do with guitars, electric guitars, drums. If the guy is hitting the snare and this overhead's out of phase, you drop it or raise it or move it far back. When you bring this overhead in and the snare gets smaller and you don't hear the depth and the thickness of it, this is out of phase. And you need to always make sure that your overheads are in phase with your snare. Same with the bass guitar and an amp and a DI. What's the big deal? Nine out of ten times, the DI is out of phase with the bass. So if you want the bass to be full bodied, you have to flip the DI out of phase because that's hitting your DAW or the tape machine faster than the amp pushing sound into a mic sound in your system. So that being said, there's all kinds of things with phase. I just happen to be working on getting two mics on the acoustic in phase. So what I'm going to do now, check it one more time. All right. If you can see on the screen, I have the, I call it the Axe, but it's acoustic guitar. This one is the ribbon mic. This one is the vocal and SM7. So if I bring them in by themselves, that's acoustic. That's the uh, vocal. Then I flip it out and the sound almost goes away. All right, let's see if this works. So on the acoustic guitar, after it was recorded raw, just the, um, it was a modified ribbon, OGMC ribbon that I re-ribboned. I had that figure eight that was going into the uh, 1073 DMP, which is a Neve made by BA, it's an older version. And then uh, the vocal I had going into a Cytec. It's clean, there's not a lot of grit to it, and you know maybe I would have chosen different ones with more time. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to play the acoustic guitar. I've had some, th I put some, you know, if I was mixing it or working on it, I did a little bit of a retro vibe to it to help that guy sound better because he was terrible. So on the vocal, I added a analog delay, just kind of barely tapping it. I put an API EQ, boosted some top end, cut some low end because at least I know in my voice, it doesn't sound good when it's bassy. I put a standard Waves Revox uh, compressor on it that I use it actually all the time. On the acoustic guitar, I have the same delay. I just, whatever I had on my vocals, I put it over the acoustic just to make sure that those are feeling the same. If I did a different timing on that delay, it could be weird sonically with the phase. And put a Bluey 1176 on it just to kind of tighten it up. And Andrew Shipp's Neve, and the only reason I added the Neve, because I didn't have a choice of guitars, we only had a 12 string at the moment at the studio, which is obviously thinner. I wanted to get more of a bigger sound, so uh, I am cheating a little bit, but it wasn't tracked with EQ, and I can always change it later. But I have a Andrew Shipp's 73, which I love this EQ, and I'm just basically boosting some low end on it, not really doing anything in the top or the mids. And then um, lastly, I still have the EQ that I actually, when I tested the tones, I had flipped out of phase. So I made the acoustic guitar mic out of phase from the vocal, and then I put tones to the amp and put some headphones on. And when I move the acoustic guitar mic around until I can hear in the headphones it dim down to almost zero, then I knew these two were in phase because then I come back in, flip this in phase, now it's full spectrum, they're both great. Most of you know if you've recorded acoustic guitar and you sing, you get a lot of vocal in it. This technique works really great because it has a nice way of canceling out the vocal coming into the acoustic. All right, so I'm going to play it back, and I'm just going to play back acoustic guitar. And because you did that cancellation thing and getting the optimum sound, I, I'm, you know, I've actually played it back, and I was really happy with how much of the vocal didn't go through. And a ribbon mic is big. So the fact that I was able to get that acoustic focused in the ribbon mic and not have a lot of vocal in it, which means that little dance between those two mics worked. So here's the acoustic by itself, no vocal, and then I'll add the vocal mic in.
and you know it's it's a muffle and that's okay you know if, if, if that's kind of what we wanted so now I'm gonna put the vocal in and I have control over how loud I can put it and it's not really interfering with the phase of the acoustic mic so I'll play back from the top with the vocal in now check is this mic on hey is this mic on are you playing yes I am Time to go back to school. And it's time to get a coffee. It's time to return that call. So even the, the guitar coming in the vocal, it's gonna happen, but it's get not back. annoying. My voice is annoying, <laughs> but oh. not the guitar. Uh, so anyways, I would say this, is, this worked out. So uh, playing them both together, one more time and then that's it. That's a cool little trick. Make sure you do this when you have time, you're in control of the session and you're not doing this on someone else's time. It's an experiment, fool around with it. Uh, if you have a good setup the night before, you can totally do this on a few things. If you do violins or strings, this would probably be a great uh, technique for doing that before they come in and you can check your mics that are all over the room. All right, so that was a fun trick. Hope you enjoy it. Don't hate me on this. It's something that uh, is very cool if you can make it happen. And I think that's proof. If you're a talented, really wicked artist playing acoustic, that would be awesome. Thank you.